in the primitive tribes of Africa, a strange disease was found. This disease spreads very fast. Infected people will die within two days. The military soon learned of the news. Dustin from the Institute of Infectious Diseases was sent to the scene to investigate. Dustin and his team had just arrived at the tribe. They saw the bodies lying on the ground and the sound of people wailing. It made them feel very nervous. Assistant Cuba was also the first time to experience this kind of thing. He lifted the curtain with curiosity. Cuba was so frightened that he had an asthma attack. He defied Dustin and pulled off his protective mask. That's when the tribe's doctor came in, said the disease was not airborne, and told Dustin that the disease only breaks out in this area. Anyone who tries to leave the area would die in that jungle, which means the virus can't spread outside. Dustin took his team back to the institute overnight to quickly study the virus. When the results of the study came out, virologist was also shocked. From the time the virus entered human cells, in just eight hours, all the cells were eaten up. Dustin went to his supervisor in a hurry. He told Morgan about the seriousness of the situation, but Morgan in turn told Dustin to stay out of it. He transferred Dustin to Mexico. Dustin was confused and had to leave, but he didn't know that just now. A general came to see Morgan. The two of them were looking at the virus specimen. He said something unbelievable. Oh my God, it's our African friend. He's back. Originally, 30 years ago, African war broke out. A horrible epidemic appeared in the barracks. The death toll kept soaring. The military sent two men in protective suits to take blood samples. These two men were Morgan and the general. They took the virus specimens and promised to send medical supplies soon. But by the time the plane with medical supplies arrived, people's eyes went from ecstasy to despair. 30 years later, the virus reappeared. Morgan and the general were trying to cover up the crime. They didn't want anyone to get involved. But then the unexpected happens. A white-faced African monkey with the virus was captured by poachers. It was then transported by cargo ship. The poachers bribed the security guards and took the monkey to a pet store to sell. He thought he could get a big prize for it, but the monkey was so wild that it scratched the owner. The poachers had no choice but to release the white-faced monkey. But on the way back, the poacher became unwell. His eyes were red and swollen and he was very weak. His girlfriend who came to pick him up found him in a bad condition, asked him what was wrong. Maybe I ate something bad? Poacher fainted directly after the kiss. At the same time, the owner of the pet store also suddenly fell ill. He was taken to the hospital for treatment. The director of the laboratory department was negligent. The patient's blood specimen was accidentally broken. He rushed to wash his eyes with water. Then he went to the doctor for examination. The doctor did not see anything wrong. He was told to take rest as usual. He then went to the cinema and coughed. The virus broke out in the town. Renee, the expert team, got the news. She rushed to the town to check the condition of the first poacher, but she was just about to ask him where he had been, what animals he'd been in contact with. Before she could say a word, the poacher died. Renee had to ask the patient in the bed next to him. The poacher's girlfriend didn't know the details either. She just went to the airport to pick up her boyfriend. She didn't know it was contagious. At this point the situation was serious. Renee ordered a direct autopsy on the poacher's bodies. The results were a shock. She rushed to call her husband Dustin, told Dustin that the body's internal organs looked like they had been blown up. All the tissues and organs were highly decomposed. Dustin was shocked at the news. Isn't this the Mwadaba virus? Dustin didn't hesitate to go straight to the town. By now the troops had quarantined the town. Not even a fly could get out of here. The residents began to panic. Some of them tried to escape from here, but the helicopters fired directly at them. The army told the residents to quarantine themselves in their homes. If they felt sick, they hung white cloths in front of their homes. Soldiers then took them away for treatment. But it didn't last long. Dustin discovered that the virus had escalated. It was now airborne. The town was completely overrun by this new epidemic. Bodies were piled up in mountains. Soldiers hauled the bodies onto trucks, put in the waste warehouse for incineration, and the patients who survived were assigned to the open square for isolation. Because of the long hours in the laboratory, doctor, virology was in a trance. The oxygen tube accidentally hung up on the table and ripped a small hole in his protective suit. He ended up on the floor the next day, convulsing like crazy. Several people rushed him to the emergency room. Dustin calmed the virologist. Renee was in charge of taking a blood sample. Suddenly the virologist's body convulsed. Renee accidentally stuck the needle in herself. She rushed to clean the wound and disinfected it with iodine. Dustin came out and took one look at the wound on her hand. He reassured Renee to calm down and that he would find a way to help. Then he went to Morgan in a fit of rage. He said he knew about the Mwadaba virus. Why didn't he eradicate the virus before? And we could have stopped it right then and there, but we don't because we have to protect the perfect biological weapon. But then the virus mutates and we can't stop it now and we could have then.
Morgan didn't mention it. Instead, he told him that the executives had discussed a meeting and decided to send bombers to destroy the town to prevent the virus from spreading across the country. Dustin got the news and rushed to the hospital to give the news to Renee. The only way to save the town now is to find the pathogen as soon as possible. He and Cuba flew a plane to the train port, set out to investigate the ships to and from Africa within three months. The two men searched through the list provided by the staff. They found a cargo ship that was not on the list. Then there must be something wrong with this ship. But there was one problem. How to find this ship once it leaves port? The staff member said it was a small matter. She has a friend who works in the Coast Guard. How close a friend? Closer than his wife would lie. The two men found the cargo ship according to the clues and found a photo of a white-faced monkey on board. They rushed to the local TV station. The photo of the monkey was released to the public. The woman watching the TV instantly panicked. Wasn't that the cartoon her daughter had drawn? Dustin got the news and rushed to the girl's house and told Morgan about it. He told him to delay the bombing for as long as possible. Looking out the window at the apple, the girl says she's the only one who can call the white-faced monkey out. Dustin leans down, told the girl he wouldn't hurt the little monkey. I'm Punch me in the nose. And so the little monkey was successfully summoned. Cuba, the assistant hiding in the shadows, a shot to the monkey's buttocks. The little monkey was then anesthetized. They returned to the town with the pathogen. An antibody serum was developed to treat Renee. Renee's face gradually returned to normal. That's when Cuba rushed in. Tell Dustin that the bomber is coming soon. That to fly the helicopter into the air. They radioed the bomber to abort the mission. The general is not happy about this. He tells the bomber that if it disobeys, he is disobeying orders. At this point Morgan realizes his mistake, reminding Dustin to park the plane in the bomber's path, so that the bomber could not complete the mission successfully. As a result, the bomber brushes up against the helicopter. The helicopter is almost overturned. The bomber drops the bomb normally, but the bombs are thrown into the sea. The town is coming back to life. Dustin and Renee are going to have a better life. And so the film ends. Nobel Prize winner Joshua Lederberger once said, the greatest threat to human domination of the planet is a virus. And what are we doing? If the host of the virus, that pathogen, is forced out of the way, it has no choice but to attack back. Remember to subscribe if you like it. The next issue is more exciting.